When I became aware that I wanted to be a musician and was gravitated towards you know something slightly different, um, of course, yeah, pop was the accessible model, and uh, I got really into uh, They Might Be Giants as a kid, and that inspired me to um, pick up the accordion, and I, I really loved the the accordion just as like a, a uh, iconographic uh, element, but also the the timbral element, and um, my parents had bought me. Uh, like a reed organ uh, when I was a little kid and I would just you know, play with clusters or try to unconventional chord progressions. And then eventually uh, went for the accordion just to try to um, you know, have a portable uh, sort of polyphonic instrument to try to work with. And, but there was something about the timbre. It wasn't, it wasn't as pungent as I, as I thought it would be. So uh, th then within, uh, within a year I was, I was uh, on pipes. In combination with the hearing the Gretzky on the radio, and uh, my dad heard the Philip Glass violin concerto on the radio and decided to go out and buy that CD, and he was cranking it in his office one day, and and uh, and, and just another thing clicked, and I was like, I have to know what this is, and um, I think there was something about minimalism in general that uh, another you know, music of restricted yet like intense sonority. Um, it, so it felt like the bagpipes was somehow related to that for me, and so I started, um, you know, got very much into the mystical minimalists and and uh, uh, Philip Glass, and then and then through there got more into the early glass ensemble stuff, which was kind of that combination of re like that uh, pungent readiness that I was looking for in in the instruments that I was playing, and had that rhythmic drive and. And um, you know, it, ma it made sense that I mean, the, one of the c complaints about bagpipes that people have is that you know, it just sounds the same, like the same thing over and over and over again. And uh, you know, the the subtle gradations from from piece to piece, um, you know, you have to sort of delve into that idiom to kind of um, really see how how uh, diverse the repertoire is. And I felt like that was a great w you know, that's how people describe minimalism. And and so it just the, these sort of uh, various things started moving together and uh, all things that I just felt uh, were structurally in common, but maybe not, uh, uh, they didn't have the same uh, audiences. Clear line is an um, an interest in limitation. Even looking back at the like, pieces that I wrote, long piano pieces, and you know the Feldman the Feldman style, um, mine weren't as dissonant as his, and um, 
certainly uh, like brought in elements of peat rock that I thought, you know, just using the piano as, as the bagpipe and sort of negating the extreme volume and, and like constant envelope by trying to explore something that was constantly dying and constantly quiet. But the pitch aspects were, were pretty um, close to home, I think. And um, uh, even in like the, the drone symphonies and stuff like that where I was starting to, I was getting into Chelsea's music and trying to find a way to like tie improvisation into the into a music like this and um, uh, I think only, it's it's weird because like Blarbuster seems to serve all those purposes that I was interested in before like rock music minimalism highly notated stuff and then sometimes we'll we'll do a gig where I write pieces that have uh, um, loose structures but limit limit the pitch aspect and, and you know have people improvise in, in specific ways but still keep the pentatonic thing going so I think the thread is is um, is this non-chromatic um, you know modality I guess and I don't know if that's kind of like a nostalgia for some other world that doesn't exist now or um, but yeah I think that's the thread like no matter what the textures or instrumentation it's um, Interest in notes. To speak about the the sort of maximal quality of opera. Einstein on the Beach was a huge thing for me and um, Feldman's Neither was also a huge thing for me. And um, just the, the idea of um, opera representing not necessarily um, something narrative but something that, that um, echoed some sort of ancient ritual where you know dance, music, things to see, um, and music as a vocal form, um, and and so it's just the multiplicity of messages, and and that for me is um, kind of also at the essence the, the essence of my music to a certain degree. Like I'm interested in, um, despite how esoteric the, the what the elements are, like I'm interested in some sort of universal message that relates back to. And my interest in world music has always been kind of. Um, trying to tie the music into its context. You know, the Balinese gamelan is, well, it's got the music, but it also has the dance together and such an uh, ornate imagery. And the dance also is, is a um, sort of an abstracted narrative. So almost all the dance forms there have, tell a story, um, sometimes with the option of a, of a, a vocalist that it accompanies and just sort of Im uh, improvisationally uh, will narrate the, the story behind it. Um, but I think it's just trying to, trying to um, allude to a complete world, I think, uh, that, that interests me in opera. And um, uh, you can still do it in minimal, with minimal means.